Hello everyone, my name is uh, Hanna Sklerska and I'm a trainer and a lecturer for Academy of Critical Thinking that is based in Slovakia. I'm also a facilitator and I uh, cooperate, uh, it's almost a year now, with uh, Creative Industry Košice and I'm leading their facilitation processes. Uh, what am I going to do today is to talk and uh, discuss one special uh, method uh, on how to perceive the world and how to use your critical thinking in order to really understand what is going on around you. Why have I choose this one? Uh, it's just a snippet uh, of the workshop, the hour workshop that we had in Košice online. And uh, this is just a part of it. They think it's super important when you work with the policies or when you're just thinking about different strategies and projects. And uh, first, and I'm now going to show you what should be your first step when you're trying to grasp what reality should look like and then what should I do with the reality itself? Now for welcome to my workshop. And maybe the first thing is that, how do I understand critical thinking? It's very easy. For me, the critical thinking looks in a different ways. Like, first of all, I think that critical thinking is like reflected, reflected in systematic curiosity. It means I'm going around the world and I'm looking around and I'm always in A. I will, I'm just looking around saying, hey, why this works like that? Why this cloud is so nice? You know, why this water is flowing this way? It's like being a child and being a kid for the rest of your life. Just keep that curiosity flowing. And that's one of the bases for the critical thinking. The second one is for me, open-mindedness. It means that I'm walking around the world around me and I'm open, open to all ideas, all different perspectives perspectives that I have around me and I can open the doors of this mind and let it in. It doesn't mean that I have to accept them but I just let it in and then start to work within the structured way. The third one is then I'm not only like letting people in but I'm also letting myself in. I'm checking on my own thinking. How do I perceive the world? Why do I perceive it this way? And that's what we are not usually doing, but it's helping us a lot to be a better uh, citizens and to maybe sometimes a partner, but I'll talk a lot later. Uh, then it's about the reflection on other possible uh, perspectives. It doesn't mean that I'm just only open on them uh, to them, but I also can compare them, you know, can think about them as a possibilities, you know, can weigh them, analyze them, and uh, then choose not one, I'm not a big fan of choosing one way, but uh, choosing those that I can apply in a specific context. And the four and the last is that how I can organize my thoughts, how I can structure them, and how then I can communicate them. That's for me a really important part. Just not staying only in my own mind, but I can clearly say them to the others in a way that it's understandable and we can work with it in a collaborative way later on. And this is the critical thinking and just like the short introduction to it. It's, I think it's more complicated than I put it in this presentation, but uh, let's start with this one. Okay, what I want to, want to do with you uh, is that I don't want to do it as a lecture. Therefore, if you are here, just prepare pen and paper, uh, three, two, one. If you don't have it, then just think about it. And I'll ask you questions. I will ask you what you can see in the picture, okay? And I want you to give me a clean and a very short answer on what you can see in the picture. Okay, let's start. Three, two, one. Okay, what is in the picture? Uh-huh, uh-huh, I'm waiting. Okay, usually people say it's for flame, maybe passion, you know, on my uh, different trainings, you know, people are quite aligned on this one. It's quite, you know, straightforward. It's a flame. Okay, let's reverse this for a second one. Okay, what is it? One thing that comes to your mind. Mm -hmm. Usually people say that it's happiness or love or person in love. Again, very aligned. Third one. What is it? 
my collector usually said it's elephant but no it's a couples and sometimes people say again love uh, hug kissing you know like something from the same bucket you know the bucket that it's like the meaningful bucket of partnerships and love but when it starts to complicate is when i show them this picture okay now we can see like three different iconographies that handle like different meanings and when we put them together it can create a little bit of mess in our heads you know sometimes it's about like this is passion okay that this is the lovely beautiful relationship you know but then some people there's always at least one in the group that said it's destroyed love or you know it's like destruction of love or something like that and then it comes to your mind how you know and usually what i said is that because people has a different uh, biases, they, they have all of them, they have the different bag that they're taking with them all the time. You know, it's the gender, the previous experience, you know, their previous relationships, for example, or relationships of their friends around them. And the, their mind starts to create the stories like that are based on these, uh, on these bags that they are taking with them every day and every night. Like when I show them another pictures, now I change only one. Now it becomes what? Yeah, marriage. For most of them, marriage. But then some people say, you know, like, well, they see picture and it's marriage, and then hey, 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 there is a flame. What is it? Oh, it's passionate marriage. But some say, oh, that's very bad marriage. It's going to, you know, to hell. And then what I do usually is to give them a little bit of story. To give them the time frame, what they should do, how they should read the pictures, how they should read the meaning. And even though I give them these hints, like that are with the arrows, they usually come with a different perspective on what does it mean. You know? Usually it's divorce, but some people said, oh, after marriage is even better. You know, there's so much passion after marriage. You know? And that's interesting how people are different and how we perceive the world but these are just the small pictures okay these are the, just icons it's very easy to say this is the flame this is the uh, the ring this is the couple okay this is how we are uh, how we are going around the world we can see these iconographies and helping us to very shortly navigate around the world thanks to them but the real world people looks more like this yes more like Hieronymus. It's hell, you know? It's just total mess. And like in every corner of our reality is happening something different, you know? Something very complex with different meanings. Yeah, look at this one, okay? People gambling. But there is maybe even more meaning. There is maybe evil, you know? Like there is a person puking cubes, what? You know, like this is, this is how the reality really looks like. It's not the iconography. It's the complex world of different meanings that we have to grasp and the best. We should discuss it and find the best meaning that comes to the group together. Okay. And what I want you to do is that I will show you the picture and let's see if we can find out what is at the picture, what we can see on the picture. Okay. Let's see. Okay, you're, this is the actually very nice exercise from New York Times. Uh, they, every week they have a different picture and they ask the same three questions. And there is a forum you can you know, discuss with others, but also you can use it in school with your kids in your everyday practice to just exercise how, you can, how patient, <laughs> no, how curious you are, you are about the pictures around you. Therefore, your job will be now to check what is going on in this picture. What do you see that makes you say that? Okay, and what more can you find? Take a look, let's take a look. Okay, what can we see in the picture? Maybe you will say, oh, look, this is the old picture. It means that it's probably in 60s, in 70s. Uh, and I would ask like, how come? How can you say that? I was like, ah, look at that clothes. Clothes, you know, the clothes are totally like in this, uh, in this, uh, uh, in this time. I was like, okay, let's say sixties and seventies. What are you doing? What are people doing in this picture? 
They're looking at something, all of them, at the same place. Ah, what is it? It's probably the TV. Well, they're watching something. And then you start to wander around the picture and you're trying to zoom in and zoom out and try to find out you know, what is going on. And then maybe you'll we'll find out that ah, this person is holding the newspaper and it's US flag on the moon. And then your brain starts to connect information. You know, what happened around 60s and 70s? What happened, you know, with the men on the moon? And it's very easy. And the answer is that this picture, this were from the landing of Apollo 11. And the journalists were taking the pictures all around the city to, to get how people react, you know, on this beautiful and amazing uh, event in our lifetimes. Yes, but these discussions usually during my workshops it takes like 15 minutes and people don't find the right answer even after 15 minutes because there are several things that happens when you are alone you can navigate better your mind is maybe focused maybe you can navigate alone around the picture and find the right uh information but for many people um it's hard to work in a group because there are some biases that we fight against during any kind of communication and any kind of perception that we have in our lives. Look, you will see my, all my preparation for the workshop. But what are they? Okay, let's take a look. The first one, what usually happens in a group discussions is that someone just throw the uh, anchor, you know, inside of discussion. They said, oh, it's definitely the death of the Kennedy on that picture. You know, look, it's like the 60s and 70s, you know, it's old, people are uh, totally shocked and they are totally like sad about what is happening and everyone starts to see it. It's not like surprise or, uh, or amazement that you see in their eyes, but you, in that very moment when someone throw that anchor, you know, you see only the danger and death around. And that's what we call anchoring. And then there can be one authority, for example, one person that just throws some kind of an idea and people just grasp it and they start and they stop to discuss other options, just take it as a, as a fact. Or it can be with the numbers when haggling, when you're haggling the, the price for the products, you know, someone set the right number, you know, it's like, you, know, you want to buy a car, and uh, it's 1,000 K, uh, 1,000 euros. And uh, and person said, oh, it's 1,000 and we are not going down. Therefore he just set an anchor, you know, our thinking about what the price of the car can be. Therefore anchoring, but be careful. And you can anchor yourself by yourself, you know, by just you know, having one idea and not pushing your mind to find other ideas or other explanations further. Here's the second one that's usually happening during this exercise when you do it with more people. It's uh, hard thinking. It means when people, you know, when there are three people that said that it's the death of the Kennedy, you know, and there are only two left that they're not sure, but they said, ah, okay, maybe when, when there are three people thinking about it, ah, maybe I should do the same. Yeah, that's what we do. And it's totally normal, of course, because we want to be part of the group as well as it's easy just to float with others uh, but sometimes it's very important to stand and to say no 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 let's discuss more let's have another point of view or just fight back or just voice out something because then we are losing you know the the main maybe the real meaning of the reality around us the third and the fourth let's make it just together. It's generalization and uh, skipping to the conclusion. It means like without further examination. It means that I see um, that's like it's also connected to stereotypes, you know, and we have this problem in Slovakia and it's very nice to, to talk about it, is that hmm, I see a Roma person, okay, and I, I'm in a bus, for example, and I grab my wallet because it's well known, okay, it's well known, it's a mythology that all Roma people steal, 
okay? And I jump to the conclusion right away when I'm in the, when the Roma person comes to the bus, that this Roma person will steal my purse. And it's, I jumped to conclusion very quickly, quickly without thinking about it and without examining, you know, the situation that I'm in. Maybe it's not like that. Maybe it's just a normal person as everyone else, which is usually true. Therefore, be careful about jumping to the conclusion. It happens also during the meetings when we are discussing, for example, the strategies for the future development of our company, you know, and someone said that, ah, oh, this year would be very bad you know we won't have enough money like to develop our branch of the company and someone said yes that's true let's but just stop the branch of the company that was very bad exam uh, example that i have used but do you understand you know without further thinking during the meetings we are very keen to create that was a very bad example but whatever we <laughs> we are able to create you know the strategies and solutions that are based on very quick and shortcutted uh, thinking about the reality so be careful about it now what you can do is that every time and you see some kind of a picture let's say the picture is analogy for us for the reality you know just think about this exercise and just play with it you know be playful uh, and exercise your mind and brain and do your job, you know, look at it and say, what can I see on the picture? And why I see it in that way, you know? Why I see this fishy, fishy, fishy fish? And what is it happening in there? And just wonder, you know? And that's, that's how you train. That's how you train your mind. It's just asking your questions and just bother yourself with being curious. And that's my pill. <laughs> for not critical thinkers, no. Let's look at it, how we can methodologically and what tool we can use for the uh, observation and perception of reality. Okay. Let me show you. Ah, that's in Slovak. No, I will just... Yeah, to... Okay, here it is. Here it is. I'm sorry. Good. To be similar, I can be still Okay. Then, what's the tool? What's the ultimate tool for perception of reality? Um, I am like trainer of critical thinking, but I'm also a sociologist, and this is uh, like very combined with the phenomenology. Uh, and and it's really nice when the any kind of I think academic uh, okay <clears throat> this is a this is the tool okay it's very easy at the same time very complex understand it as it's a um, let's say ideal model I do not expect you to do this uh, every day and every minute of your life but uh, even if you try at least one of the steps, you would be a better critical thinker. Therefore, let's start. Let's, uh, let's start with our example of the pictures, okay? First thing that you should do when you're trying to examine the reality in an objective way and evaluate it you know, critically is to, you know, just to observe and not to judge. Because you can go to the city, sit on the bench, okay? And take a look. What are people doing around you? Do, do not judge them. Just take a look. You know, observe. I mean, it's like this lady is coming by. She's having like nice red dress, and she's going a really fast pace, and she's heading south. That would be my, you know, explanation. Not explanation, but uh, description of the situation. If I can describe as much as I can without any kind of conclusions, you know, what I see. I see, you know, people on the picture that are having like old school clothes. I cannot say in what, you know, what year, but they are kind of old school, something like that. And then you can really think what is going on there. You know, and really, if we're, if there, it's not just the picture, if it's more dynamic, uh, uh, scenario means like people are 
talking about something, people are doing something, then just describe. Describe the process. How is it happening? What is going on there? And then the third one, what do I feel? Sometimes it's important also say like, how do I feel in this situation? You know, I feel uh, butterflies in my stomach, you know, when I'm looking at this young lady walking by. It's very important to say that because it can really influence how you evaluate, you know, your observation. Therefore, observe, do not judge, first. Second step is uh, try to recognize your biases. It means like what can influence my vision of the situation, what can influence my judgment and observations? And what do I, why do I see it that way? That's a good question to ask, you know, why do I see that beautiful lady, you know, that way, that is beautiful, you know? Why it comes to my mind? How come that I find lady in the red dress beautiful, but this lady not, you know? And just dig in, you know, how come? Maybe you had a beautiful girlfriend that, really love to wear red dress. Maybe, maybe not. What is affecting you? And that's the ba baggage. That's the bag that I was discussing previously uh, and before. That you, your gender, your age, uh, your socioeconomic background, your profession, many times your profession, is really distorting how you see and perceive the world. Imagine a meeting at the city council. There is an architect, there is a sociologist, and uh, let's say a community worker, okay? And they're discussing if they should destroy or not like new, the, the old community centers and build the new street in there. And imagine what different perceptions according to their profession there will be. Very strong opinions, very problematic environment. And that's what you have to think about when you think about yourself. So reflect on your own biases. Okay, and the last one. Why do I see that as important? That's usually like where my eyes are wandering when I'm observing or listening. It doesn't have to be only seeing, okay? It can be also listening or touching, whatever. All the senses are included. Why this one? Why is it so important to me? Is there anything else maybe around me that should be important, but why this one is important? Okay, the third one, uh, the third uh, step is to analyze and explain. Now it's the time. Now it's the time to make conclusions, okay? I know my own biases, I observed, and now I can think about what patterns I can see, why, it's, uh, why is it like that? The mistake in my presentation why is it like that why is it happening you know and why is it happening to me you know? or ask open questions and push yourself to situational analysis open questions are keys you know why who when how what are the patterns can i compare it to something else analyze and go deep go very deep do not do not stop with the one conclusion do not jump to conclusions and the fourth one which i love the most is to open and expand even though you did this uh, analysis, just go and ask someone else, how do you perceive this world? How do you perceive this uh, picture? How do you perceive this situation? And what else do I have to find? Do I have to find some kind of uh, evidence like for my thinking? You know, do I have to go and search and use the Google you know, to understand better? What are the information, what are the, what are the statistics that I need sometimes you know, for, for these conclusions? Do I need to observe more? Maybe yes. And how I can look at it different? What different perspective and angle I can take? And that's when you go and ask other people, for example. Or you stand from, and when you're on the street and sitting on the bench, just stand out, stand and go to the other side of the route and look from that perspective. You know? But to ask people, that's the magic. No, to ask different people, and especially those that you think that has different opinions as you have. And it's very important in this world, when we are closing ourselves to social bubbles, we do not speak to other people that has a different point of view, because we think that it's wrong, because we think that it's, uh, I don't know, uh, it's a waste of time, because we are so closed in our own biases, in our own beliefs, that we sometimes forget that to clash, it's the way how to find the best solution. Therefore, go and ask. And what is the magic about this method? 
and I want you to remember it, is that it's a never ending story. Even though you thought that you come to your ending conclusion, you should start again and watch the, the situation and the place and the reality from the beginning. Because when you check before on your biases, when you did your analysis, when you ask other people, it will definitely help you to see that reality in a totally different way. Therefore, I hope that this tool will help you to be a better city builders, to be better community workers. No, I hope that uh, these two, and uh, especially like realizing that we are usually mistaken in our heads is sometimes tricking us, you know, around, will help you to come better solutions uh, for our living and living in the cities. And if you use a special piece of creativity that we all love and uh, that we can live better lives together. Therefore, do not forget. What is the critical thinking? Give me just a second. It's something like this. It's this. It's mind blowing. Use this. Open your perspectives. Thank you very much. Uh, it was very nice to prepare this video for you. I hope that you enjoyed it and see you hopefully uh, soon some kind of other projects alive. Have a nice day.